equipment that we have. Mm. This is a what we call the Middletown car. It was built right here in Middletown uh, by the Middletown Car Company as a trolley freight motor back in 1903. And of course it was an open weather car. The uh, motorman had to stand out here on the platform so he was exposed to all the rain and the snow and the sleet and the hot sun hmm. when he was running. And it was used um, on the South Brooklyn Railway up in uh, Brooklyn, New York. First to haul freight and then later on as a salt car uh, to treat the rails and things when they had uh, bad weather. Um, it needs rewooded and our Preservation Society years and years ago purchased new mahogany siding for it which is currently inside the car. Um, but we had always wanted to get the platforms rebuilt first before we rewood it because, of course, to do this, you're going to need some welding and everything, and we don't want to rewood it and then have a spark burn it down. Yeah. So if we can get the platforms done, then we're going to rewood it with the mahogany we have inside the car. So as I mentioned in the narration, um, the... Um, <laughs> Uh, Middletown Car Works built all kinds of cars, passenger cars, freight cars, even trolley cars, and here's the evidence of it, built right here in Middletown. And that is the park going to be where the car, where this was built, that big parking lot, when you went on the train ride on the right at the other end of town. That's where the Car Works was, and that's where this was built. And this car here was also... Uh, part of uh, Brooklyn Railways. This is a trolley convertible car. So in the warm weather, the warm summer months like this, you could raise these windows up and they'd fold up partially into the roof. So you would have fresh air and ventilation. And then in the winter time, when it was cold, you'd close them to stay warm. Uh, down here at the end, You've probably seen some of these in the museum, but we do have a bar that requests for Lincoln Bin Company. We believe it was used on the mainline railroads at one time. Um, we believe it was built in the late 1860s or possibly the early 1870s. And we got it um, in a trade with the uh, Branford Trolley Museum. We had a couple pieces that they wanted, they had a couple pieces that we wanted, so we traded them. It was in much better shape. We used to have it on display outside for about 10 years or 15 years next to the station. And of course the weather did take its toll on the wood, so we did move it back inside. But you can see there is where the pin would drop down through, and then of course we had the link uh, for the Lincoln pin couplers. It was last used in service by the, as a storage car and moved around the plant at the Singer uh, Sewing Machine Works, which I believe was up in Lowell, Massachusetts. This is another historic car uh, that Wendell was able to acquire. This uh, car was former Lewistown and Reedsville, number 23. And uh, this car sat for many years, if you ever go up to Penn State games or whatever on 322 along the Juniata River, if you remember, you used to go up that dangerous stretch that was three lanes along the river, yeah. and then they rebuilt it into a double level, four lane mm -hmm. highway. Well, this was in the path of that construction and it was gonna probably be scrapped. And uh, Wendell was able to buy it and save it. He moved it to a farm outside of Lewistown, and then later he had it moved down here. But this was used on the streets of Lewistown and ran out as far as Reedsville. That was the name of the railway, the Lewistown and Reedsville Railway. And over here we actually uncovered the original car number, 23. It was originally built for service in uh, New Jersey, and then it was bought used uh, by Lewistown uh, 
I believe it was in the early 20s, and then they actually abandoned the trolley lines around 1932, I believe. And then after that, it became a, quote, gentleman's club, unquote, <laughs> where the guys would go out along the riverbank to get away from their wives and fish or play poker or drink. And it was in that capacity probably for 60 or 70 years until Wendell was able to buy it and move it. So it has some stories to tell. Yeah, I would imagine. <laughs> yep. Yep. Does Wendell have any uh, foundation or setup for the next step here when, when the not, inevitable happens? Not to the best of my knowledge. He may 